hurrah for a theme! Today marks the fourth episode that's still gonna have something to do with the repeating three. It's really kind of amazing! Anyway, okay. <laughs> now that that's out of the way, <laughs> I'm Rebecca Farnham, this is Ramblings with Rebecca, and today, Marxism. Yeah, let's get our blood up. Not really, this is gonna be pretty boring and not really about, you know, communist versus capitalist debates much at all. Um, however, Marxism, specifically as an international relations theory, uh, along with neo-Marxism more or less, but I'm basically just going to talk about tenets within them. Um, it is important to note that Marxism is, as an international relations theory, again, <laughs> um, is not really considered very much in the United States. Um, I, like, was barely taught it in my classes even though I have an international relations degree. Um, we just, we don't look at it all that much. We don't consider it a big thing. Um, certainly Marxist thought we consider and is built into a lot of other theories and theorists and core readings and that kind of thing. But Marxism as an international relations kind of school of theory, basically ignored. It has a lot more attention um, in Latin America, Africa, parts of Europe, um, where it is fully integrated into political and public discourse as, you know, a school of thought. In and of itself. Anyway, okay, so Marxism um, gets away from the realist versus liberal arguments about whether or not states are selfish or should go for permanent peace. Um, it says international relations and world politics and the global stage are not actually about state conflict versus cooperation. It's all about economic and material aspects. Do you know anything about Marx? <laughs> You're not surprised here. Uh, Marx really does focus almost entirely on economic wealth, on class structures and conflicts over class inequalities along wealth and material lines. That's really Marx's big shtick. Um, so two kind of big things within Marxism um, and neo-Marxist thought, uh, dependency theory and world systems theories. Dependency theory um, says that developed countries, like the US and the UK, for example, um, that are after power, integrate themselves into developing states um, through advisors and experts, through multinational corporations, through missionaries, through foreign aid, that kind of thing. So they integrate with them, they pull them into the global capitalist market, and then of course they get access primary access and beneficial access to their natural resources gain and you know those developing countries become dependent on the developed countries and the developed countries are able to manipulate them and extort them for various resources and other grand things from the developed countries perspective um, so this is very in line with ideas of like neo-colonialism and ideas that you know foreign aid isn't actually you know for the recipient, it's all about, you know, donor interests, uh, that kind of thing. You know, how is the United States sending XYZ people and organizations and factories and whatnot, you know, to country A? You know, how is that any different than just go ahead and, you know, set up, set up a government explicitly, at least, you know, you were clear that you were <laughs> claiming it as your territory. Um, so that's a strong reading of dependency theories. Not everyone goes all that far as to call it colonialism, but the basic gist is, you know, relations between states help to create dependency such that the more powerful ones can extort the, the weaker ones. World systems theory um, goes perhaps a little bit further even away from kind of traditional international relations school of thought in that it almost, I mean, basically kind of throws away the nation state as what we really need to be in analyzing, uh, and splits the world into core, periphery, and semi-periphery. Core nations are those that are really wealthy, more productive, more educated, stronger governments, blah, 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 blah. We're talking about, you know, the developed countries, the US, the UK, etc. Periphery nations, less economic diversity, lower education rates, um, weaker governments, poor health, that kind of thing. You know, I mean, the less developed countries, um, Africa, <laughs> in most um, people's mind today. And the semi-periphery is between the two, so it's the Brazil, the India, the China, the South Africa, and those kind of states that are on the way up 
if you will. And um, this theory thinks that we should not look at relations between states so much as we should look at relations between core, periphery, and semi-periphery. Like that's actually the unit of analysis because if you really believe as a proper Marxism that it's all about wealth, that's your unit.